Father, we thank you. We thank you for you being our father, our daddy, our papa, that we can have no better daddy than you. One that takes your wing and just draws us into your, your presence as our protector, as our shield, as our fortress. We thank you. We thank you that you did not leave us, abandon us, make us orphans, but you said you are mine Amen. and I watch over you. We thank you that you guide and direct us, that you sent the Holy Spirit for our benefit. We Amen. welcome the Holy Spirit this day with his wisdom and guidance. We welcome the Holy Spirit to lead us and teach us, open our ears to hear and our eyes to see all that you have for us this day. Guide our words, our actions, so that we can be your hand extended and that that which we loose here on earth is also loosed in heaven and vice versa. We thank you for this, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. I'll do the prophesying. Okay. Hmm? I'll do the prophesying. Okay. All right. <clears throat> thank you, Father. Let's see. Let's see all who's here. Thank you. All right. Cassandra, I'm going to have you take us in with Thanksgiving. And I'm going to have uh, Janelle, you can take us in with praise. Oh, Lord, thank you this morning that you have given us this beautiful day, Lord God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for the, all that you've done for us, Lord God. We thank you because you are wonderful. You are lovely. You are Lord of Lord and Kings of Kings, Lord God. We thank you that we'll be able to come directly to your throne with, with um with thanksgiving and praise, Lord God, that we can come boldly before your throne. We thank you, Lord, that you that you are our Father, Lord God. And we just praise your name for Jesus. Yes, and we just thank you. Thank you, Lord God. We just thank you for everything that you're doing for on our, on our behalf yes, and on the behalf of the United States and, and every all the people of the earth, Lord God. Thank you for your plans for us, Lord God. We have a hope and a future, and we just praise you for that. We thank you for that, yes, Lord. Lord. Thank yes, you, God. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we praise you. You are the majestic king. There is nobody like you, nobody in the whole wide world, in the whole universe. No one can compare to you. We bow before you, we worship you, we adore you. You have proven yourself so many times. Nobody can convince us otherwise. Though the mountains fall, though the seas rise, you will keep us safe. You will have a place for us. And you even are like a mother hen, like, a, like Dan said, you cast your wing forward and draw us in. And we will not be like we will not be like our forefathers who said, oh no, we don't wanna, we don't wanna come under your wing. Oh no, we wanna do, we'll obey you God. But at Mount Sinai, we said, no, we will do it ourselves. But Father, I praise you. Even with all of that, you still didn't turn away from us and you still don't today. We praise you. We praise you because we are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. And we have the abilities that you give us. We can connect with your spirit. We praise you, Father. Praise you, oh, Abba, Daddy. You are so good. We bow before you and we say, thank you, God. We praise you forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Father. Father, I ask permission to bring this group to the Court of Decrees so we can continue making our decrees. 
regarding the United States of America and the election that is happening in so few days. We thank you, Father. I ask those who are seers to go and look over the edge, the balcony, and look down on America and see what you see. And while you're doing that, I call in all the great cloud of witnesses, all the prayers, all the tears, all the supplications that we have been standing on for the past months. And all the court cases and every tear and every prayer and all the blood that's been shed for righteousness, all the martyrs' blood, we call it all before into this court of decrees. Okay. Can you see anything, Rita? Well, <clears throat> on, on the uh, country, I saw people scurrying all around, just like preparing for something or trying to do something. And then there were angels above all around, just watching over in light encompassing the country. <clears throat> That's good. It's much better than what we've been seeing. OK, Nick, what did you see? Uh, like Rita, I saw uh, there was like rolling mountains and people standing and behind the people were angels. Mm -hmm. These giant warrior angels were standing behind them and the, I, the people either were praising or shouting something. So I'm, I'm, that's confirmation of, of what, what Rita saw. Okay, Lord, we ask for um, understanding on what the people are shouting. Yes. Anyone else see something? Janelle, you have to unmute. I mute you. I mute everybody when they're, after we do the praying. I okay. saw our father, Jacob. Okay. I, I saw Jacob and I don't have the full interpretation of it, but he was so happy. He was, he was looking out at us into the future and saying, those are mine. Those came from my loins. Amen. Yes, and the, he just was exuberant. So I don't know what all it means. I'll in the day I'll probably get some more. Thank Amen. you, Father Jacob. Remember, Jacob was the man of flesh who overcame. He's really the image. Yeah, but he's but we're overcoming. I know. And that's why he doesn't condemn us, but he sees we're overcoming. <laughs> I know. I know. Hmm. Andrew, are you seeing something? You've got such a smile on your face. No? Anyone else seeing? I saw like the gator mouth taped shut. Okay. And the front legs tied up. Oh, okay. So it can't move. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We thank you. Joni, did you see something? Nancy. Lights. Just lots of lights. I mean, like city lights. Yeah, I saw lights, but they were these incredibly large like laser but they were so bright that they were yeah. just coming up out of the ground and going up into heaven it wasn't mm -hmm. i expected light coming down but it was said it was light that was just coming up floating up anyone else see anything okay eileen i didn't see but with my knower I um, sense that all the elements are brought together to bring the project off with victory. All the elements that God needs. Everything's together. Okay. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The, um, we're going to finish up the decrees today. Since we've been working our way through these, I think it's important to accomplish that which we've started. Um, last night, Dan and I, for those who live in the Midwest, we did a lot of prayer for the Midwest. So we're believing things are shifting there. We really are. So as I come into this court and stand in the court of decrees, I stand in agreement with the apostle and high priest of our faith, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Yamashiach, with the standing King of Kings and Lord of Lords, with the creator of the universe, with the very breath of God, the Holy Spirit, 
with our architect, the architect of our faith, and also the architect that has already completed and finished that which he has spoken. And we, we stand and we stand. And we, I decree that the United States has not forgotten Dr. Martin Luther King's dream. And I decree that with Jesus, that our president and yes. our president, that racism cannot and will not be the legacy of our generation. I decree that the racism no. is finished. Racism is finished. Racism is finished. I decree racism is finished. I decree racism is finished. That the civil war in the United States is thwarted. I decree the people will come and see one another, not by the color of their skin, but by the nature, by the character. They will be judged by their character, not by the color of their skin. And the division between men and women in this nation will be between the sheep and the goats. Between the sheep and the goats. Those who know Jesus Christ and those who don't know him yet. We decree that this is the only division in our nation. This, is their, this nation is indivisible under God. Indivisible under God. Indivisible under God. Oh, okay. When I did that, I realized I was quoting the Declaration of Independence, I believe, or the preamble. I have to look it up and I'll decree that. Okay. This is really interesting. <clears throat> Come on, it's not coming in. While I'm waiting, I will continue. I decree that the legal definition of marriage, which was written by the court, by the Supreme Court, without consideration of the creator, original design and definition, cannot serve as the standard for covenantal relationships in the United States of America. I decree that marriage shall be separated from the state. The state will no longer be the arbiter of marriage of covenantal marriage. Civil unions will be civil unions, but marriage will only be that which is covenanted between God, a man, and a woman. I decree what Jesus Christ says, America, God wants you. America, God is calling you. I decree what Jesus Christ is saying in heaven. America is mine. Everyone say it. America is mine. America is mine. America is mine. America is mine. I decree that Jesus Christ involves himself in the affairs of men. He involves himself in the affairs of men. God rules over the nations. And we are, America is positioned for a new era reformation based upon apostolic reformation operating at the foundations of his reset. 
I decree that the reset that is coming to the world is the reset that is coming from heaven, not the reset of Davos, not the reset of the new world order. It is the reset of almighty God. He is resetting the apostolic order to come in to the nations of the world. As the Ecclesia stands up and does what the Ecclesia must do, the Ecclesia must take the keys of the kingdom. The Ecclesia must forbid and must allow, <coughs> open and shut. The Ecclesia must stand in the gates of the nations. We decree that the radical representative remnant arises throughout the nations of the earth. And that the word of the Lord will be resounded through all the spiritual arenas in this nation. That the true word of the Lord will be heard by the prophets. The true word of the Lord will be heard by the pastors and the apostles. The true word of the Lord will be heard by the people. Holy Jesus, holy Jesus, holy Jesus, holy Jesus, holy Jesus. I decree that the kingdom, Ecclesia, which has been created by Almighty God, by the men and women who have cleansed themselves and submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and have been made themselves ready to ascend the mountain of the Lord. They have been created to confront the pagan Ecclesia as in Ephesus and Asia Minor, as Luke records in Acts 13, Acts 19. They have been prepared. I declared that the kingdom ecclesia is standing. The kingdom ecclesia is confronting the pagan ecclesia that has been ruling in the gates of the United States of America. And I decree that the gates are closed to the pagan ecclesia. The gates are closed to the pagan ecclesia. Pagan ecclesia, you yield the rule of the gate now. You yield the role of the gates on the seven mountains. Pagan Ecclesia, you step down. The foundations you've been built upon, they're destroyed by the angelic armies. <coughs> I decree what Luke said, that in this way is the kingdom Ecclesia stands in the gates. The word of the Lord is gains momentum through overcoming spiritual might and took dominion. I decree that the scroll that was unsealed from the Beersheba overflow of Cape Henry shall gain momentum through overcoming spiritual might and take dominion in the United States of America. Oh, the overflow, the overflow, the overflow, overflow. Cape Henry overflow, Cape Henry overflow. The momentum is released. The momentum of Cape Henry is released. The momentum of Beersheba is released. The momentum of Donald Trump in this election is released. The momentum, the momentum. <coughs> The tsunami momentum is released for the kingdom, for the kingdom, for the kingdom of Jesus Christ in the United States of America. I decree that this reconstitution of the kingdom ecclesia restores the intended purpose and destiny that Jesus Christ had for America. America is a fathering nation and restores this reconstitution of the kingdom ecclesia restores America her to her place of leadership among the other fathering nations. Oh, I decree the restoration of America's proper place in the nations. The proper place in the nations. And we all decree America shall be saved. America shall be saved. 
America shall be saved. America shall be saved. America is saved. Yes. And if you agree, we shout. Amen, 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 amen and so be amen. it. All right, anybody see anything that they want to say? Anybody see anything? Okay, un unmute if you want to say something, please. <coughs> Jackie, as you were praying, um, the, the Lord revealed to me that I saw all of these people in America praying. They were bowed down, uh, almost like fully kneeling onto the, the ground. And above them were these small flames of fire. And as you were praying, there was a blowing. I heard a blowing of wind coming down from heaven and began, the fires began to get higher and higher and higher and raised. And the Lord was telling me that he's beginning to, to pour out his spirit upon all these people and, and, and he's, he's prepping them and, and rising them up and making them ready. Amen, 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 amen. Anyone else, anyone else? Rita? I didn't see anything specific. I heard something on Sid Roth yesterday that troubled me, that there had been Egyptians here before anybody else and they claimed the land for Baal. Oh yeah. But I, I assume prayer has been done for that, but I didn't know if we needed to do anything more. Um, not today. Okay. Heartland Apostolic Prayer Network. We have to step into just a room of consult. We can't stay in the court of decree to discuss. Um, so we're stepping into that room of cons consultation. Um, Heartland Apostolic Prayer Network. That's the whole reason they did the bail divorce decrees that were released to the nation. The reason each state raised up teams to go and deal with it. Okay. There is more than likely in this nation, there is um, structures that are under the earth that are pre-Adamic. The um, I've always understood the pre-Adamic, and this is my opinion, this is not anything that's doctrine. But in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 28, when it des describes how Lucifer had profaned the sanctuaries, and then he was cast out of heaven as a profane thing. The profaning of the sanctuaries would have been the profaning of the sanctuaries of the pre-Adamic men. Um, Dake's Bible has an incredible um, Bible study that you can go through on the pre-Adamic um, cultures and going all through scriptures and showing. When he was cast out, God judged the earth with, with flood. That's why in the beginning of Genesis 1, it says in the beginning, you know, in the beginning, in the, beginning the earth was without mm. void, okay? That was void is the whole idea of it was in total chaos, was totally, and God had, the earth had already been created. There was something already there, but to describe it. So our beginning in scripture only begins with Adam, but that does not mean that's the beginning, the true beginning. It's the beginning of what we know. So in the beginning, God prepared and created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form, was an empty waste, and darkness was upon the face of the very great deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. That whole word there was without form, an empty waste, is all chaos. God doesn't create chaos. So in my understanding, that was the judgment of the pre-Adamic race. That's why when they find bones that are 50,000 years old, it's not, it's not that they're lying. But Adam, Adam came in Genesis 1. And that's where God took his man and formed his man. So the, um, I have no problem, you know, with when they say there's bones and trying to discount it in any way, shape or form. I, I recognize there was a pre-Adamic race. Hmm. Um, 
and they had pre-Adamic structures. And you have to understand when he, when Lucifer was profaning the sanctuaries and taking the worship that belonged to Almighty God to these people, he was doing a trading floor with them. He was revealing to them under the secrets of the spiritual realm. And that is why the sanctuaries turn out to be the places, the high places throughout the wor world. Kathmandu, high place. And the enemy always goes and establishes high places where the pre-Adamic temples had been established because they always layer temples one on top of another. <clears throat> they know where these sites are. They know where these sites are. So like in Arizona, you've got Sedona, very, very <clears throat> wicked place, very wicked place. So um, Shasta, Mount Shasta, there's certain places that are just wicked. There's wickedness attached to them. So the America was only rediscovered by Christopher Columbus. The, um, the Vikings were here. There's Viking remnants. There's Jewish remnants. They have the, in the desert of Arizona, they have found the Ten, Con Ten Commandments in ancient script. They have found artifacts, Jewish artifacts. They have, there's some talk that the Cherokee have Jewish DNA. Yeah. So we have to understand Christopher Columbus only rediscovered this nation. There's the, they have found all over the East Coast, there are baths, ceremonial baths, probably established secret places by the Knights Templar. When they came, they left France, they came somewhere and established these incredible structures. Down in Georgia, in a national park where no one is allowed to go, there are Mayan structures and temples. So we have to understand Christopher Columbus just rediscovered this nation. And that is not something we're taking on at this point. Many, many people have been doing that prayer work. Okay. That's why I, um, I remember listening to Dan Duvall and he said he had been working on understanding the pre-Adamic curses on the land and how it's impacting us today. Now I have not explored that, but I believe it's something I will look at. You know, certain places where people live, you have to really look at, is it a blessed place or is it a cursed place? So um, I didn't mean to get off in that. Anybody else see something else? I, I just have a question. So I don't know if it's a question or anyway. Um, so since I started fast, we started fasting, my, my heart has been drawn to the land and um, to, to go and stand, sorry? Oh, Tina speaking, okay. Yeah. To stand on, to stand on, to stand on the land like barefoot and just walk around the land. Mm -hmm. um, this morning I had a, I woke up and it was like hearing this voice, Apache, Apache, Apache. So I was like, I mean, I'm, I'm from Zimbabwe. I don't know much. I know the history of America, but I don't know it that, that well. But I, I woke up. Where are you living, Tina? Uh, Texas. Okay, Apaches were in Texas. It's a native tribe. So yeah. Oh, it's an yeah. So I I woke up hearing Apache, Apache. So I'm going. I. What am I? How do I? So my question is, how do I tackle that? Because I've been asking the Lord this morning. You know what? What does this mean? Who Who are they? What is their role and place with what we're doing right now? The, because I, I, I would the, not have thought of them. Right, you would have never had the name. Correct. The, the Apaches were a Indian tribe, <clears throat> fierce Indian tribe that was located in Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. The other fierce tribe that was near them and part of them, not a part, was Comanche. Comanches were incredibly bloodthirsty. They, they were... Um, they, they would go on these incredible raids in Texas and destroy ranches, ranches and kidnap women and children to make them slaves and burn ranches. They were, and they would do what they called it, an Apache moon, I believe it was in the fall. And they'd go and steal the, the, um, the cows and the steers and the horses. Now the Apaches, now you're gonna have to seek the Lord on what he means by Apache. 
Now the Apaches were fierce warriors. They were able to endure incredible hardships and survive in a very, very harsh desert climate. And anyone who has lived in the desert understands how harsh that climate is and that you have to have a particular kind of personality. So I would ask the Lord exactly what he is saying to you about Apache, okay? Okay, okay. Calling us to be Apaches, the ability to survive under harsh conditions, these warriors being like the mighty men of David who were able to live in the mountains in the deserts of Israel, <clears throat> you know, or is he saying there's bloodshed from Apache on the land and bloodshed always has to be cleansed and that's redeeming the land by Gwen Shaw. Okay. Thank you. I'll put redeeming the land by Gwen Shaw in the chat to ev everyone. Um, this is a book you really should use for your own property. Just where you are, it's how you cleanse your house, how you cleanse the land you're living on. You begin by cleansing the land you're living on. You don't start by cleansing other lands until you've really dealt with your own land as much as you can. Okay. All right. The um, Let's do communion. And then I want to give further instruction about tomorrow when we're going to supplicate is Esther before the King of Kings. So I want it. See, I had a face. Sonia. Sonia, I want you to do the, the broken bread. And Rebecca, I want you to do the cup. Okay. Sonia there. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just continue to thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, whom you have given us, O oh God, as a sacrifice. And Lord, we thank you that his body was rooted, was broken for us, to save us, to heal us, to deliver us, and to make us, God, into who you want us to be. Father, we thank you for the body of Christ. We thank you, O oh God, that he did not turn away. We thank you, O oh God, that he has laid on his life, scarred, broken, and bruised, so that we can be come to you, O oh God. We can be your sons and your daughters, all because of obedience, of giving up, O oh God. Lord, we thank you now as we eat the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. For Father, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for your body that was broken for us. Oh, Lord Jesus, we give you the glory and we love you. We thank you for making us partake of your blood, your precious blood that is speaking, that is speaking all the way back, that's still speaking into the future. We stand in oneness to thank you for this blood. You said when we partake of it, we are one with you. Oh, Lord Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, our King, the great I am, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the yea and amen. We love and we thank you. This blood of yours, as we stand in oneness, to take, to drink your blood, to partake of this, we ask that your blood continue to accomplish what it had said way before the foundation of the earth. Over America, let your blood begin to flow. 
yeah. over America. Let your blog continue to speak. Yeah. Speak. Yeah. Speak yeah. over the land, the blood, the blood to go into the foundation of America, to, to go into the path of America. And the blood speaks. The blood that overturned, the blood that shot every other blood down. Yeah. Let your blood speak as we drink. Let your blood <laughs> shut down every other voice as it's we so... partake of your body. Yes, Lord, Lord Jesus, yes. we thank you for your blood. We receive your blood. And as we partake, as we drink, we pray that in our individual place, your blood will continue to speak through us. Yes. That we have stand in agreement. We have yes, decreed, and the blood is here to confirm it. Amen. In the name of Jesus, name Father, of we Jesus. receive it. We thank you for your yes, blood Lord. over the thank nation, blood, over the world. The in Jesus' Lord, name, the world, hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for your blood. Amen. Thank you for your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your blood, Lord. Thank you. Father, thank you for your blood. Today, thank you, Lord. Thank you for eternity. We ask that these words be recorded in the books of heaven. We ask that the angels be used on our behalf so that we see the blessing of the Lord that makes us rich with every spiritual gift in heavenly places that is legally ours by right of eternal covenant with Almighty God. We feel this work in the blood of the Lamb by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God. We declare, according to Isaiah 55, 11, that every word in agreement with the will of the Father shall not return empty without accomplishing what he desires and without succeeding in the matter for which it was sent. We declare that the Holy Spirit's breath, Zoe life, is upon these prayers. We declare that the enemy shall not release against our lives or our families any curses, counter curses, strategies, or retaliations against our health, marriages, children, grandchildren, finances, ministries, businesses, properties, destiny, or well-being, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, now, tomorrow, we're going to be as Esther, and we're going to supplicate before the throne. We're going to come in and know that we have the favor of the king. So I went to Esther just now. And on the third day of the fast, Esther put on her royal robes. So we're not coming in mourning. We're coming in our royal robes. So I want you to imagine yourself tomorrow before we gather, as you're in your quiet time. Imagine what royal robes the Lord would have you dressed in personally. Um, I, when I do that, sometimes I see myself in these majestic gowns. They're just absolutely beautiful. Colors are wondrous. They're just beautiful. So I want you to imagine yourself in your royal gowns as a daughter of the king, as a son of the king, putting on the absolute most wonderful of all the garb that you have. We're going to stand in the inner court of the king's palace opposite the throne room. We're going to stand in a place where he can see us. We're all going to come and we're going to stand there. And he's going to call us in. He's going to extend his favor. And when the king saw Esther, the queen standing in the court, he obtained favor in his sight. And he held out to her the golden scepter. He extends the golden scepter. And Esther drew near and touched the tip of the scepter. Now I've never noticed before that she touched the tip of the scepter. It's not just that the scepter is extended, but she had the favor that she could even touch the tip of the scepter. Then the king said to her, what will you have, Queen Esther? What is even your request? It shall be given to you even to half of the kingdom. And Esther, because she had been fasting, she had wisdom. And she said, if it seems good to the king, let the king and Haman come to this day to the dinner that I prepared for the king. Now it goes on, it describes how excited Haman is to have this favor to come and sit at Esther's table. But he was invited. And he's just so, so happy. And he's caused the gallows to be made. And that night, the king could not sleep, and he ordered that the books of memorable deeds, the chronicles, be brought, and they were read before the king. And it was found written there how Mordecai, 
had told of Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's attendants who guarded the door, would have sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. And the king said, what honor or distinction has been given Mordecai for this? Then the king's servants who ministered to him said, nothing has been done for him. I want you to notice that God caused the kings, the rulers in the land, to dig up information that he would then set right. That which was had not been recognized, that which had not been given any attention to, that had been ignored, the righteous deed of Mordecai that had been ignored, he caused that to be brought to the attention of the king. There are many righteous deeds in this nation that have been ignored, righteous deeds that have been done by President John Trump that are utterly ignored by the press, utterly ignored by the people. And I believe we need to decree and come before and ask that these righteous deeds be acknowledged. The king said, who is in the court? Now Haman had just come into the outer court of the king's palace to ask the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows he prepared for him. Behold, Haman is standing in the court and the king said, let him come in. So Haman came in and the king said to him, what shall be done to the man whom the king delights to honor? Now Haman thinks he's the one that's gonna get honored. He said to the king, for the man whom the king delights to honor, let royal apparel be brought, which the king has worn, and a horse which the king has ridden, and a royal crown be set on his head. And let the apparel and the horse be delivered to the hand of the one of the king's most noble princes. Let him array the man with whom the king delights to honor and can conduct, conduct him on horseback through the open square of the city and proclaim before him, thus shall be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Make haste and take the apparel of the horse, as you've said, and do so for Mordecai. I want you to imagine how Haman is feeling. Here he's come to hang him on the gallows. And instead, the king is saying, honor him. So Mor Mordecai came again to the king's gate, but Haman hastened to his house mourning and having his head colored. And his wife said to him, if Mordecai before whom you have begun to fall is of an offspring of the Jews, you cannot prevail against him, but you sh he, but shall surely fall before him. And then they have the dinner. And that's when the, she informs the king about the reversing of the letters devised by Haman, which he wrote to destroy the Jews in all the provinces. Seal it with the king's signet ring for writing which is in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring. No man can reverse. Then he commanded the Jews to the chief rulers and the governors of the princes of all, to every province and so on script, to every people in their own language and to the Jews according to their writings. And they set out and he sent swift steeds to take the letter. In it, the king granted the Jews who were in every city to gather and defend their lives, to destroy, to slay, to wipe out any armed forces that might attack them or their little ones and women, and to take the enemy's goods for soil. So we see because she had the courage to stand before the king and ask what seemed to be a nonsense, really her, the request to stand there and touch his scepter and all she asks is for him and Haman to come to dinner. It's really quite remarkable. It's really quite remarkable. So I want, but I do want you to pre prepare requests and know that when we prepare these requests and we have been given, we've been acknowledged with the favor where the scepter has been extended to us, prepare your requests for the King of Kings and this is not, I do not see this as being personal. I believe this is for our nations. This is for our people. This is for our races. But the Lord showed me yesterday, and I don't think everybody was on. He showed me there are among you, there will be, and every, I'm going to need your faces tomorrow. I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to need your faces because I'm going to be, um, the Holy Spirit told me he would highlight the faces of those who he has extended his scepter of favor. And I'm gonna ask Dan to help me with that. This is not favoritism. 
This is not favoritism. Please do not in any way take any offense on whatever happens. This is the grace of God. This is the grace of God extended to us, extended to us. I, I remember after Haiti, he told me that I could come before his throne and he, I've extended the scepter of my favor and ask what you will and it will be accomplished. And that day I asked for wisdom. So ask wisely, prepare wisely. Okay. Does anyone have anything they want to say in, in preparation? Uh, Jackie, this is Gloria. Right. Now, tomorrow we're asking for the nation. You said nothing personal. So, I mean, like we wouldn't ask for wisdom for ourselves. We could we ask, can ask for wisdom for the leadership of the body of Christ. We can ask for wisdom okay. for the body of Christ. Yes. All right. Good. Got it. Okay. We just made it get broad enough. <clears throat> Anyone else have something to say? Um, Janelle? Yes. It might be good as we go before the king to revisit Psalm 45, 10 and 11, which we prayed before. Oh, listen, my daughter, uh, forget your father's house and leave your peoples so that the king can delight in you. So that if there's anything that the Lord wants to do, where you've not left the identity of your natural father's house and your forefathers. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's what I plan to do. Yep. The also with that Psalm 45, which is so important, it says, so the king will desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Be submissive and reverence and honor him. The king's daughter in the inner part is all glorious. Her clothing is inwrought with gold. She shall brought to the king in raiment of needlework with the virgins. Her companions that follow her shall be brought to you. With gladness and rejoicing will they be brought. They will enter into the king's palace. I will make your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall the people praise and give you thanks forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The, it's important to understand that what's happening happened on the inside of most of us, all of us, during this season of prayer is he's been working a beauty on the innermost parts of us. He's been, mm -hmm. he's been forming us into his beautiful sons and daughters. It doesn't matter how we feel. It doesn't matter how we look. What matters is he's been doing the work and you cannot, you cannot discount the work that he's been doing in you. Even if you're still struggling, you cannot discount the work because it's in your spirit. It is not in your flesh. So it's very, very important that you understand there's been a working going on in the midst of you. He's mm -hmm. been working in your innermost parts. He's been Amen. transforming you. He's been changing you. He's been beautifying you with his oil as you have been so faithful to sow into his heart and to the desire of his heart, as you have aligned yourself with his desires, he has aligned himself to transform you, which is his promise. That be, be not conformed to this world, but by transformed by the renewing of your mind and make yourself a living sacrifice. And as you have come day after day, this is a living sacrifice. I'm telling you right here and now, it is a living sacrifice to every day enter into the intensity of the kinds of prayers we've been praying. Now, if you're not able to participate, you can do it yourself in your quiet time. And you can go into the court and, sup and come before him. And you can, you'll know if his scepter is extended to you because you'll sense it in your spirit, the extension of, your, of his scepter. And if I miss you by... I, any chance, if I miss you, you just go in and you do it. Do you understand? I don't want anyone to feel like they do not have the favor of the king. I don't, I want all of you to recognize that you are dearly beloved, dearly beloved, dearly beloved, and that you have the favor of the king and you have the ability to ask, make your requests known to him. 
It says, with thanksgiving, make all your supplications known unto him. So we're going to go in with great rejoicing and great thanksgiving, knowing what God is going to do. Any comments before we? Okay. Jackie? Yes? I'm unclear on what kind of request we can bring. Okay. What are the desperate needs in the nation? I believe you wrote the split ticket voting. Okay. So you can make a request about the split ticket voting. Okay. Anything that is on your heart that you see needs to be dealt with that we have not been able to dealt with, deal with to this point in time. And you know what those things on your heart are. Okay. You know, my concerns will be for the body of Christ. Okay. Eileen? Yeah, this morning it really hit me heavy about um, the Mayflower 400 year uh, coming out of captivity on November the 11th. And I just feel, um, I don't know if I'll be chosen tomorrow, but I just want to put it out there for whomever that we do not, when we come out of captivity, that we do not make the errors the Israelites made in the desert, that we will completely do the Father's will and obedience and just have a tender heart toward him that the church will be cleansed and step into her you know, rightful place before him. Eileen, just prepare a request. Just prepare a request. It's all I'm saying is prepare requests. Prepare requests. Prepare requests. I'm really going to have each of you go and get before the Lord and see if his, if his scepter is going to be for you. You know, just go and look. Just go and ask. Like, you know, humble yourself, get into a quiet time of worship and just be before him. I really don't want to be the one to choose. I want you to raise your hand. I really, I really don't want to be. And Nancy, I love that, that the king seals on different areas of our hearts and souls. See him sealing us. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Mm -hmm. It says we've been established. There's three words that our pastor used on Sunday, but the third word was sealed. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And we have to really believe it. Um, Sonia and Rebecca, was it Rebecca? I can't see Rebecca right now. I really want to thank you for your communion this morning. It was very, very powerful. Very powerful. And you won't be too, hey, Jackie. If, yeah. If the Holy Spirit highlights them. Right. You are. <laughs> That's right. I'm thank you. <laughs> so the um, I really try to involve as many of you in, in prayer as I can. Um, I must admit, I have certain people that I love their voices when they praise. <laughs> <laughs> Any comments? Any comments before we go? Yeah, I've got something, uh, um, something that I saw yesterday, but it has to do, it, it doesn't have to do with the meeting. Can I ask? Can you take the recording off? Okay.